Now, both have gone to some trouble to come here, and we're grateful to them. Mrs. Murray has the... Uh, Mrs. O'Hare has the flu, and we're delighted that she could come, and Dr. Bowman <laughs> flew all the way down from Washington to come. We'll begin by putting the subject under discussion to each of our guests, asking each to give us a brief statement of position in answer to the question, is atheism the religion of the future? Organized religion and traditional religion is dead. Not alone their God is dead, but everything else uh, is a rotting corpse. It's this simply because it is not relevant to what is going on. I find that the progressives and the liberals do one single thing. They coat the pill differently so that it can be accepted. But when you have it and you're hooked again, there it is, and it's just as fundamental as those weird old tales of the Old Testament, and it is just as irrelevant. Instead of throwing the whole thing out and starting anew with human values and human goods, uh, all of the religionists are, tr are tied uh, psychologically, emotionally, traditionally, historically to these ideas that are no longer valid to the human community. Mrs. O'Hare, as I understand it, I've only just now had the privilege of meeting her, uh, is ultimately concerned about certain issues of separation of church and state, uh, the integrity of uh, the belief of persons, the relevance uh, of uh, any kind of belief in today's world, and this really becomes her God and her religion. And now I understand from what you tell me that a church has been established, uh, and so she's on the way to becoming institutionalized as a religion, which would seem to me to be... Uh, uh, this is the... This is the way all religion has gone. I'll be the first to admit that. And now this religion is going the same way. I uh, ran across a, uh, a, a pertinent, knowing I was coming down here for this evening, I ran across a pertinent comment by Vincent Van Gogh, the artist, who said on one occasion that I cannot bring myself to believe in God, but I find that I cannot live without believing in something beyond myself. Well, the only question, if we're really going to communicate, is not whether there is a supernatural being or a god. It's simply the god of your life and the god of my life. Does, does the god in whom we believe make sense? Now, the one other thing I want to say... Just like a man. He, 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 he. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the other thing I was going to say, and that's beautiful. To me, the god of the Judeo-Christian tradition is the god of all people. I happen to believe that in certain historical events recorded in a book called the Bible, he revealed himself in a definitive way, but he has certainly revealed himself among other people also and loves these people just as much. Uh, I would be the first to admit that the idea of a judgmental God is very uh, dangerous and unhealthy. The, the German uh, psychiatrists have a word, incidentally, ecclesiogenic, to describe the neuroses caused by the church and by religion. I'd be the first to admit all of these things, but this is a sign to me of the greater need for what I believe to be the basic truth of the Judeo-Christian tradition, namely that God is ultimately for us, that that which is beyond ourselves, there is a power, there is, there is a force beyond ourselves, is ultimately for us, and my life simply doesn't make any sense apart from it. Uh, do I understand you correctly, then, that if... Uh if there's something that's important to Mrs. O'Hare, then that's her God. No, that, no, I did not say that. I say that which is of ultimate concern to her would be her God. Isn't Hitler religious? Boy, did they pursue their yes. ultimate concern. Yeah, this is what would I'm saying. Would this kind of a definition exclude me out? I'm not interested at all in having Tillich's your... ultimate concern but given to me. But you can't exclude yourself out under this definition. Yes, I in. can. Please, believe me. We all accept those definitions which we desire to accept when they are responsive to our own inner needs, etc. Right. And all that the liberal or progressive theologian does is to draw the circle so large that he entraps the person who does not care to be identified with him. Yeah, but the beautiful thing about this is, the beautiful thing about this is the very position... That it that lets you carry water on both shoulders. No, no. The, very the fundamentalists love you and the progressives say, ah, isn't he brilliant? Do you know any fundamentalists that love me? I think I'm so. <laughs> they understand who said They certainly aren't on the side of the atheists. No, the beautiful thing about what you're saying is the fact that that position which you have just espoused is Madeleine Murray O'Hare, as I understand it, and you are ultimately concerned about that. So I'm simply saying that this I, is your... I reject Tillich as a madman. How did Tillich get into this? His ultimate concern. 
I, I reject uh, Reinhold Niebuhr and his total involvement as madness. Good. I re certainly reject the Judeo-Christian religion, and I think that every Muslim in the world would be appalled at the fact that you uh, take Jesus Christ as a standard for them. Then reason is your God. No, because I will not permit you to define what an atheist is. I will tell you because I am the atheist. Good. Well. <laughs> it's that simple. Then you tell me. I'm listening. <laughs> when you say that an atheist is a believer in something because it's a double negative, which was your cute introduction, uh, this is uh, uh, incorrect, and you know it. And what you're trying to do is pass over, in a facetious way, a very important position of many, many people. No, I'd really an like to know what an atheist is. is a person who does not accept your ideas of theism and your hierarchy of theism. Now, in relationship to the fact that we are projecting atheism as a, quote, religion, end quote, this has to do with decisions of the United States Supreme Court, with court decisions in the United States, because uh, in many states, in Michigan, in New York, in California, in the United States Supreme Court, in many federal district judges, and in three-court federal judges, these people are saying that atheism, humanism, ethical culturism, Scientology, uh, belly button gazing, that all of these are religion, and that these are all tax exempt. And this is the thrust of what we're trying to do. We're saying, all right, if all nonsense is tax exempt, then we will pull ourselves within a definition of this legal nonsense in order also to be tax exempt and take the traditional tax cut that the religionists have taken unfairly against the masses of American ta taxpayers up until now. It's a play on words, it's deadly serious, at the same time it's facetious, and I was hoping that everyone in America would realize this, and I think that most people have. You've just given us a very beautiful statement of what you believe, and all I'm saying is it, it, this is your religion, not just for tax exemption purposes. The idea of uh, uh, putting in a pillage of God onto this absolutely horrifies me because your religion, your Judeo Christian religion, and your God has been exactly what has been manifested in history. It has been murder and hatred and uh, fierce dogmatism, internecine warfare, cruelty, rejection of people, anti-sexuality, degradation of women, debasement of the intellect, you are exactly what you have been represented to be for years. And you can't beg off and say, oh, well, those people really weren't Christians, because now, 2,000 years after the fact, we're going, to we're going to define it in a different way. We're going to define it to take in the good people, atheists. But you've just How given... How dare you? You've just given... <laughs> You've just given a very beautiful list of reasons why I happen to believe, from my own experience and point of view, the Judeo-Christian God is so desperately needed. These people who call themselves Christians or identified with the faith were not truly representing what he had they revealed in Jesus Christ. They represented it exactly. They represented Jesus Christ in spades. The intolerance, the hatred, the schisms, everything down the line. We this can... man never talked once about the love of a woman. He never talked once about beauty. He never talked once about the uh, reasoning capacity of man and man's ultimate concern with those things that are necessary uh, to an orderly and a just life. He never once used the word justice. He never once used the word harmony. This man was horrendous, really, a despicable person and no one should hold him I don't, up to be anything to anybody. I, I don't know what gospel you've been reading. It must be very different from the one I've been reading. Uh, <laughs> you've apparently been reading a very different Bible than I have. Well, I have yes. been reading exactly what you have, been, you have written, and I am I didn't talking write about... It. I use the word <laughs> you generically. <laughs> I would pop out of saying that you had written it too if I were you. No, uh, I'm, listening with, uh, I'm listening with great interest, and I think it does require uh, some sort of response on, on your part, uh, her representation of the gospel. Now that well, the thing that concerns me is that she is doing the very thing I would sure she would acclaim that the fundamentalist does of reading the scripture to fit her own preconceived notions. 
Uh, and we have to understand that the Nobody Gospels... Nobody else does that. No, I'm, I'm agreeing that we all do it, but you have accused the fundamentalist of doing it. And all I'm saying now is that you are doing it from your point of view. The only way we can ever communicate uh, from our different points of view is to try to be open to each other, to say this is how it looks to me from where I have come at this point in my life, according to the tradition in which I grew up, what I have accepted according to reason, common sense, and so on. And then You've had 1,600 years to make your Jesus Christ work. No, but and you had thousands him, of years before that no, to make we atheism didn't. work. No, we didn't. You certainly did. No. <laughs> I think that you know, and I certainly know, and those persons who have read history know, uh, that every person who ever had an idea was either slaughtered or imprisoned by the religionists from the time immemorial. One of the scriptures that you mentioned, however, that bothers me so much is the statement about Jesus and reason. He took a law from the Old Testament about loving God with all your heart and soul and strength, and he added to it to love God with all your mind. He was concerned about the very thing that you're concerned about. And the thing that troubles me and so then much... And he said, if anybody doesn't do this, there shall be neat weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I've usually been overcome by uh, the teeth in the New Testament. Well, you've been he... talking about the weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth that has been brought upon our society by people who are unreasonable. You and Jesus are talking about the same thing at this point. Please, don't include me with the no, man. It's exactly right. The thing that concerns me so much about your statements is the fact that you are generalizing... Uh, the very thing you accuse others of doing, you were generalizing yourself. I would admit that there has been a conflict of religion and science. I would admit that there have been many followers of the churches who have been unloving and unjust and so on, but to, to put them and all together would, would be as unfair as for me to say no. all atheists are, uh, are uh, well, whatever they are. I, I, think that, <laughs> I think that the thing that is most important to understand is the intolerance. This is the single thing in All Christian right. religion. All right. and the I, intolerance of any other viewpoint. Um, you, I, when you uh, used an introductory statement here. here, you used an introductory statement here to wish Jesus Christ and Judeo-Christianity on the Muslims, on the Taoists, on no, the no, Buddhists. No, 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 no. And you pointed Did out... Did I say that? No. You're, you're saying that. Let's bring well, this. then back up and say, then, that this is not the only God. No, back no, up no, and no, say, say that, that this is not no, the no. only Savior. No, back no. up and say you will accept Guatama. Back up and say that you will accept Well, what do you mean Fatima accept? Whoa, whoa, uh, instead okay. of Jesus Christ. Wait, you will do this. Let, let's give him a chance to do one. <laughs> <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> What I'm saying is that there is one God who has created the whole universe. He, he, lo he loves, she loves all mankind, he, she, it. This power, this creative power that has brought life into being is equally for everyone. He, she, it has revealed himself in the Buddha, in the Koran, in many other places. I happen to believe partly because of the tradition in which I grew up, partly because of reason, partly because of common sense, partly because of my own experience, that the, the, the revelation that came through certain historical events, which we Here call we go back to this history the judeo again, that we don't, Christian we do tradition. We do not accept. I, I don't know really that any well, atheist would expect, accept the historicity well, of Jesus Christ or any really... Yeah. I'm not asking you at person. this moment to accept it. All I'm saying is that I accept it and that from my point of view, this gives me a, a clue problem. or a key to interpreting the meaning of life as I say it. Man, way up here. I would like to address, direct this question to Mrs. O'Hare. Basically, uh, the question is supposed to be, is atheism the religion of the future? Now, Dr. Bowman has been attempting to find out exactly to what you are committed. It is very easy to tear down something. Premises are easy to tear down, but it is quite difficult to build one that has any reasonable foundation. I am trying to say that I am committed to life and to living now. I am committed in re to reason, rationality, and to the ability of man 
to solve his own problems, seek his own solutions, find his own faith in his own activities, and to do this free of any encumbering dogma so that he doesn't have to drink any wine, chew any wafers, sing any hymns, get down on his knees, genuflect, go to church, uh, put so much in the till that he is capable of doing this from an inspection of the cultural values that are around us constantly and which flow in every direct direction. We can be eclectic. I go back to Madame Curie for this value. I go back to Clarence Darrow for this value. I go back to um, someone else, Mark Twain, for this value. I go back to Thomas Alva Edison for this value. And putting them all together, I can see where we could have a fine, rational, distinguished, and uh, organized uh, way of living that would give absolute circle of individual freedom around each person and that we could do away with these. We do not need prayer. We do not need uh, an idea of a continuation of our personal identity after we are dead in some sort of a miasmic condition out there. We do not need to say that we are inferior to some other idea that is seated someplace, some it, some thing, some entity from whom we draw our substance. We can draw our substance simply and only and beautifully from ourselves. And the lives that we live can be the kind of lives that human beings should be living. And right now you know even the cows are doing better than we are. Many of the things that Mrs. O'Hare is speaking about, living in the now, uh, being alive to life now, are the very exact same things I'm concerned about. And all I was saying was, I cannot find these meaningful uh, or meaningfully apart from this God of grace who I have experienced in this particular way. And, and you the must religion... predicate that on a historical person no. someplace Well, in, we in could the go background. on and discuss that if you want, but no. you're jumping off the issue now. No, I'm not. I'm and right the, on it. That's it, why you're The thing that concerned me so much when you were talking is when you said, we have to do this and we have to do that, all you can say is, I do not have to do this. You, you were trying to draw me inside your circle then when you said, we do not need prayer. We do not need to be concerned about an afterlife and so But you see, so you are saying that you need prayer. That's you right. are saying that you have an idea of life after death. You are right. saying that there was some sort of an historical entity right. uh, which you believe in. And uh, right. you thrust this upon the community here in America. For instance, the atheists have been trying to get a televised program uh, once a week over the entire nation. Mm -hmm. And we are denied this by the Federal Communications Commission and by the Federal District Courts. Your side is the only side that is ever presented Your in an organized fashion. Your argument is with the FCC, fashion. not with me. No, no, our argument is not with the FCC. I, mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh -uh. Let me show you the fallacy of that. What you're doing is trying to remove your responsibility by one step. You have a responsibility to see that everybody in the, uh, the community of America knows that there is a different idea in a, opposition to your idea of the Judeo-Christian ethic. And as a, a Christian, allegedly, you should be a person who then sponsors or proliferates the opposite idea. And you should also see to it that this uh, that our government is uh, is involved you, in this kind of thing you just in order to here. see just that there is a free expression of ideas constantly yeah wait a minute now this is very important you just jumped the track there because <laughs> i was going along with you so well i would agree that in the united states as our government is now constituted we need to make it possible for persons of all views to have a right to express their views i was agreeing and but you i do have not... a responsibility to do that I do not need to sponsor the opposition's view. I don't mean sponsor That's it in relationship to, I mean sponsor it by actively uh, promoting it intellectually, not by no, saying not I'm going to sponsor now. it and I'll now give you a minute. plug. You mean, there's, there's no disagreement here then, is there? You mean promoting the right of the person yes. to do it, not promoting their view. No. Right. Okay, I'm right. agreeing. No disagreement. Absolutely. Okay. There's no problem. I believe I recognize There's right. no problem, but still the uh, entire... No, not community. any problem with me anyway. But still, okay. the entire uh, social media in the United States is exclusively for the benefit of the Judeo-Christian community. I am the single atheist in the entire United States
whoever gets on any programs anywhere, and this is spasmodically, sporadically, and scattered all over the United States. That's just because you're not organized well enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's you're not right. true at all. All right. This is exactly what Christianity has done up to this time. For many years, uh, for instance, during the Inquisition, you killed off the opposition, and then you said, well, why didn't you speak up? Yeah, but let's not or you that. went on crusades and actively, physically converted them by violence. Or you went into another nation under a program that you called missionary work, and you said to these people, I am going to abuse your culture, I am going to abuse your concept of gods, and tell you that you must accept the Judeo-Christian God in your community. You've gone to Japan and uh, China and India and uh, South America, and you have gone every place that you can go Certainly. do this. And you, you will find that there are many, many Christians who are as deeply concerned about this as you are. You are the person who wants us to live in the now and to go back to the Crusades and the Inquisition hundreds of years ago and use this as an argument for the now. Seems because you're doing it in a different way now. The way that you're doing it is this. I cannot purchase television time. I cannot purchase advertisement in Time, Life, Look magazine. I can't even purchase advertisements in local newspapers. I cannot purchase time uh, in as num many uh, radio stations as I desire to do, no matter if I have 15 times the, the money that is needed for all of this, or 15 times the organization, because... Uh, the religious community, in uh, concert with the United States government, sees that this opinion is super. Well, I think you give us yeah. more credit than we uh, deserve uh, uh, for having the influence, the ability to do this. But let me say, there are many of us who are just as deeply concerned as you are that there are people in the religious community who have not read the Constitution of the United States and do not understand exactly what you're saying, that this nation gives freedom for persons of all points of view to express their points of view and to have equal right to do so. And I'm agreeing with you here. Please, yes. Let, I think let's, there's uh, a, let's not be labeled I'm just this concerned by your generalization, right. you see. Let, let's not be labeled that. There's not really enough disagreement between you to make an issue worth, worth arguing Yeah, but I enjoy about. the harmony so much. I just <laughs> yeah. want to stay with it for a while. All right. Uh, this gentleman here. You have spoken of certain Christians being horrendous and therefore undermining that faith. Have you known any atheist to be horrendous? And if so, has that undermined your total faith in atheism? I can only speak for those atheists that I know of in respect to uh, what we conceive of as a valid atheism. For instance, in Russia today, and in Russia in recent prior history, atheism has been used as a political tool just as Christianity is used in America today as a political tool, as a weapon to drive people or to influence people. I don't know uh, some of the things that have happened in respect to uh, mass movements of atheism, etc., in Russia, because uh, the history has not been made open to us. But, oh, I know atheists here. The very first institute that we ever had in America, which was a research institute, the Smithsonian Institute, was founded by a deist, who, which is a precursor in America to an atheist. Uh, the very first secular college was founded by a, a deist in America. The very first uh, astronomical laboratory was founded by a deist, an atheist in America. And I'm talking about Girard College, Smithsonian Institute. I'm talking about Thomas Alva Edison, Mark Twain, Florence Nightingale, almost every great name that really did something, somewhere along the line, rejected the Christian ethic. Who were horrendous. I'm certain that Stalin was an atheist. I have read a great deal about him. This doesn't shatter my faith in the tenets of atheism. It means that there are... Uh, perhaps monsters in every religion do you or lack any, of religion uh, do you have any quarrel with uh, uh, the deists being included well, among I'm the just, atheists I'm uh, just very, very yeah. confused by that point I don't understand your uh, associating deism with atheism a deist is one who believes in God very definitely well I think actually that one has to go back into uh, the history of deism and the writings of the deistic persons and certainly of our founding fathers in America and what they meant in respect to this. I've been and trying to think of one of our founding fathers who was a deist, 
What who, you're trying, you're kidding. Who, 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 no, no, let me finish. Who was a deist who could be, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, be called an atheist. I don't understand this. They believed very definitely in God. They rejected often the Christian ethic, and I think that is often misunderstood. Yes, and but, I think that it's necessary that to say this, that atheist. our Constitution had the word Jesus Christ and the word God specifically left out of it. And when we were talking in terms of our Constitution, we were talking about we the people, not about God. The first four presidents of the United States were deists. You right. know this. And they believed the in first, God. No. What they believed in was nature and nature's God. Now, what you're talking about, huh? Oh, now wait. You see, what happens is this, and this happens constantly, and this is why you include God to define us in. You know that there are 200 million persons in America, and that when you talk to 200 million persons in America about God, you're talking to that vast silent majority who thinks then in terms of this man, it's a male image, he's white, he has blue eyes, He's authoritarian. He might have a wee little bit of Jewishness in him, not too much. <laughs> but he might have just a, you know, his great-grandmother might have been a Jewess. Something like this. And this is authoritarian, etc. It has to do with church attendance. It has to do with hymn singing. It has to do with everything else. Now, when you, as a superior intellect, give an esoteric definition to God, those poor people out there don't know that what, you, you mean something entirely different than they mean. So I think that when you talk to people on television in America, it's necessary to talk in terms of what is generally believed to be God in the United States. And it isn't your idea of deism. It isn't your idea of nature and her rules. It isn't any part of this idea. And when we get back to deism and we try to bring it up today, I don't think that any of our founding fathers would be at all perturbed right now to be included as atheists as this word is known and used in America today. All you're saying now is what I tried to say at the very well, beginning, that it's extremely important to define very carefully what we mean by God or what we mean by atheism or what we mean by theism. But you will Otherwise, do it. We don't you even... use it as an ultimate concern and you even include atheists in it. Wait, let's let him Other, make Otherwise, and, all and I'm saying is question. otherwise we, we aren't even communicating if we don't at least have this kind of semantic uh, beginning. To our conversation. You course. said or implied a while ago that uh, this despicable individual Christ that uh, degrades life. Yes. I didn't you imply know what, it. I uh, said it. What would Martin Luther King think about that statement? I wouldn't have the faintest idea what Martin Luther King thought about that statement. Well, Incidentally, you... I knew Martin Luther King. Yeah. And uh, I, I would not presume to speak for him. But I, I think, though, that Martin Luther King can make uh, mistakes about God ideas and Jesus Christ ideas just the same as you or I or anybody else. May I speak from my own experience? I think that Martin Luther King would say that his life was upgraded and his life had meaning and he did what he did and he gave his life because he believed in Christ. You cannot I would speak say that. for Martin Luther King. I'm well, this sorry, is my sir. experience and I think Could it would I be say his. Just a word here? Oh. All right. All right. I know you're anxious to get to these people. Well, Martin, I I Martin Luther King and I were schoolmates and attended many classes together and debated these very questions up at Boston University where he got his doctorate under the same man that I did. And rather than defend either one of you at this point, I want to say this is a beautiful example of what I've been trying to say all along, that Martin Luther King, from within his point of view, would try to give meaning to life in accordance with his experience of that Judeo-Christian tradition. Pick me a questioner up there. You've got a half a dozen. Can atheists and a religionist get together on one point, though, that from what I have picked up from Christianity, the main thing is to love your neighbor. From what Mrs. O'Hara is saying, love your neighbor, live for now, live for for the people around you. Can't we get together on that? Even in this room, there's such tension. There's hatred between the two sides. People are, at least we're not putting Mrs. O'Hare on a, a, a scaffold or something, but in another day she would have been. I get back to the same thing, that the essence of Christianity is intolerance of another opinion and intolerance of another way to salvation ex except uh, through those persons who do accept Jesus Christ 
and through him find some sort of salvation or meaning in life. And the Christian will fight to the bitter end to make everybody love this idea. And what the, the atheist is interested in is this. We believe that religion is a private affair, that it should be out of the public arena altogether, that those persons who care to live these kind of lives with these kind of ideas have a right to do it. But they do not have a right to move out into the culture and saturate the culture with these. When Mrs. O'Hare lumps all Christians together and attacks a certain <laughs> definition of Christian, which she has apparently experienced, she is as, being into as intolerant as she accuses the Christians of being. If you person. don't like the definition, get out of it. What definition? The definition of Christianity that has been d well, given to you through history. I think we should not ignore the questioner in that the essence of Christianity, as far as its result is concerned, is the very kind of love that this uh, young lady has talked about. I've I would experienced agree, that love. I know all I about it. I would agree completely with her. Uh, if there have been persons who have been intolerant, and apparently you have suffered terribly at their hands, I would simply say this is a mis... I would say this is a misunderstanding of what the gospel says to me, and certainly to Martin Luther King, and to many others. This and gentleman, I'm very sorry uh, for this it. gentleman in the yellow shirt by the wall has had a question. Mrs. O'Hare, uh, and an atheist, went over to uh, quote unquote the mission field one time and found an, uh, a native reading a Bible, and he said, "What do you mean reading that dumb old book for? Don't you know it's a, it's a collection of fables and there's a lot of mistakes in it?" And the native looked up to him and said. Well, if I hadn't heard the message of Jesus Christ from the missionary came over here, you'd be in my kettle right now. <laughs> and uh, I have met personally the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And before that time, I, my life was Dudsville. But now I have an aim, a purpose, a goal in life. And I, if you would just give Jesus Christ a chance in your life, I know you're put on the spot. But if you would say... simply say, if you are alive, Jesus Christ, if you really did come from the grave, I will be willing to surrender to you and let you be my Savior and Lord. If you are alive, I'll give you that much of a chance in my life. I Do you hear what you're statement. saying? You're saying, I'm going to surrender my identity to you. I'm going to surrender my will to you. I'm going to surrender my humanness to you. I'm going to surrender. I'm going to surrender. For God's sake, stand on your own feet. Live your own life, not Jesus Christ's life. You have something to life, do. He can live his life. You have, me. no. Do not surrender your mind to somebody else. Do not surrender your thoughts to somebody else. Do not subjugate your freedom. I'm surprised at you, a young man. <laughs> I'm a part of the establishment. I turned 30 the other day. And I know that the life that I lived up to that time before I met Christ as my Savior, I deserve to go to hell. But Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Saved me. I'm glad you had a little fun. There <laughs> wasn't much fun. All right. This, uh, the gentleman, that, yes. Uh -huh. uh, in view of the fact that our subject is, uh, is atheism, the religion of the future, I'm sure there are honest atheists here tonight that are serious about this. This is a serious thing, very serious. And I know there are religionists, Christians here tonight, who are deadly serious about this. I believe, Mrs. O'Hare, did, uh, uh, did you infer that this is a tongue-in-cheek proposition, this religion you're establishing, that you're just doing it for a front? We want something serious here, and does this represent all the rest of your... Your doctrine, let's be serious. I am talking about taxation of the church when I say that there is something here that's tongue-in-cheek. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of information on the new religion, faith in man, the freedom faith, the fourth faith, the faith that comes after the Protestant faith, uh, the Catholic faith and the Jewish faith, the faith that goes on where they stop the faith of the future, the faith of the now. I'm perfectly willing to send it to you. You can get it just by addressing me in Austin, Texas. There are pages of it. It's very, very serious. However, there is something extraordinarily funny also in the fact that as a religion, now since the government has defined me as that in, ju in judicial uh, sayings, now I can do something that the religionists have done over a long, long time which is steal from the public. 
by tax exemption, by being able to run businesses without paying the corporate tax, uh, by uh, being able to purchase uh, without paying their fair share of the burden, by holding stocks and bonds and not needing to report it, by getting involved in industries at all levels and not needing to report any of this, and the powerful way that they move in. Look what the Baptists do to Texas. You know, I couldn't even have a mixed drink on the show, despite the fact that I've got the flu tonight. This is horrible. And if you stop and look at this, women all over the United States can't do anything about uh, abortion simply because of the Roman Catholic Church. Young men can't do anything in relationship to the draft simply because they have to be a conscientious objector and believe in God before they can say, I don't want to be drafted. There are all kinds of inequities in regard to this. And it's very serious. We are going to make this dishonesty ring throughout the land so that everybody will see it and hear it. If there is a dishonesty, would you be honest in partaking of the dishonesty and expect these young people who are at the point of life where they want to make a decision, you expect them to follow someone who is following the dishonest part of Christianity? I am going to associate myself with the money. Thank you. And with That's that money, I'm going to say to the young people, all right, we'll show you then that we can get a seminary and you can join the seminary and you too can be draft exempt. There's, some, there's something I've been wanting to ask Dr. Dr. Bauman. I wonder if I might now. Uh, I'm curious about who you think is winning right now in the country. Are we becoming more or less religious? What do you mean by it? If you mean the institution, the smell of death is everywhere, and I think that's the work of God himself, who's going to kill it off and renew it. Pretty soon you'll move to the position of atheism and you'll be calling it Methodism. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. There are 11 million uh, Methodists, more or less, in the United States. I hear various statistics because you all report in a very funny way. Yeah. So do the if atheists. Those, if so those 11... <laughs> we don't have an opportunity to report. If those 11 million Methodists would all contact President Nixon tomorrow and say we would like to withdraw from the war in Vietnam, would we be able to do it? How many if those 11 million Methodists, remember, you're organized. You have grassroots in every city. You have money. You have a voice. You have a voice on television, radio, and newspapers. You have it in the pulpit. You are the grassroots organization in America. Now, if every one of those 11 million Methodists would say tomorrow, <laughs> would say tomorrow, this it's enough of this now. From yeah. here on, the Negro is integrated. Would he be integrated? Can you get the 12 million atheists to agree on anything? Providing I get a voice to speak to them, yes. Well, this is a... Uh, 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 it's as simple as this. I gather this you don't have that uh, authority. In this the is a sign of supreme human confidence, it no. seems to me, that if you speak, 12 million people will agree with what no. you're saying. What I'm saying is this. We are unable to contact those persons who are with us in respect to religion, we are consistently unable to contact them. But I'm still interested. If you could contact them, are you telling me that you could persuade them to follow your particular point of view on anything? No, I'm not saying that. I am saying that, I, that for instance, if I could pose uh, a problem to them in relationship to religion, I know what they would say in relationship to that particular thing. For instance, the necessity for separation of church and state. I think that there would be no argument in relationship to that from the uh, atheist community. I think that we'd, we would be almost monolithic in certain areas. Yes. In certain other areas, we would be not. Because, for instance, atheists are found most in the Republican Party in America. Well, you have answered my question. On certain questions, the 12 million Methodists would be primarily monolithic. There are certain issues we would ah, agree but on. Jesus but Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. But an issue such as a specific war in war Vietnam. And a specific time, one of the problems that Christians have is that Christ's only absolute teaching was the law of love, absolute agape love. And, and we're, this, we're and, really wailing them with love over in Vietnam. And what this means in a specific situation you will never get 12 million Christians to agree on. This is part of the problem that we have. What does it mean to love it's in a specific situation? It's also called a cop-out. Let's get back out into the audience. This gentleman, uh, no, right there. Mm -hmm. Relate the cause of all these uh, wrongdoings of man to Christianity. You sound more like a reformer for the church than against it. <laughs> <laughs>
If actually the church was doing even 3% of what they claimed that they were doing, I would be knocking at the door of the church to get in. But they do not. They are the most gross kind of hypocrites uh, in relationship the, to this. Uh, of Christianity or of the people? What the church does constantly, particularly the, uh, and we're back to this again, the liberal and progressive church is to put up a good verbal mouth. But when you actually get into it and you see where the human problems are, it's the churches who are holding back the free education, the liberation of the human mind, the liberation of culture, the liberation of our society. This Mr. is the anti-human. We're nearly out of time. We've just got time for Dr. Bauman to say one more thing. We're, we're, we have that chance if I have only minutes. 10 seconds, I would say that God loves Mrs. O'Hare. God loves all of us who are here. And that ultimately, ultimately, God uh, is going to be able to express the kind of love that he intended for all of us to have if we'll just be open to one another, as one of the questioners was suggesting earlier.